Hi guys, my name is Bas and welcome to SPSS tutorial 40 on my YouTube channel here. Okay, so today is going to be the first video out of three on clustering. So as you can see in the background, I've got a data set with 30 respondents, uh, which are ranked on anxiety, depression and attention deficit disorder. And it's between one and hundred, with one being a very low score and having very little anxiety, little depression and little attention deficit disorder up to 100, which is very, which means that they have a lot of anxiety, a lot of depression and a lot of attention deficit disorder. And what we want to know is whether SPSS can make clusters, so can make groups out of this data set. And the first way to do that is by two-step clustering, which is the easiest one, uh, because it does, it does automatic clustering. So, uh, it's, uh, um, it automatically suggests the amount of clusters uh, for you instead of you having to figure it out for yourself. So that's a major uh, plus side. A downside is that your uh, is that your uh, uh, data set, your data, needs to be uh, nominally distributed. Uh, which in this case, I've just made my own data set. In this case, it is not uh, normally distributed, but we're just going to ignore that for this video. But normally, if you're going to use this for your actual research, then your data has to be normally distributed if you want to use two-step clustering. That's important. Okay, so we're going to go to Analyze, Classify, and then the two-step cluster. And then the variables we're going to use are, of course, Anxiety, Depression, and Attention Deficit Disorder. I'll just call it ADD for short. And they can be either categorical or continuous. But in this case, they were between 1 and 100, so they are continuous. Uh, in the lower left, you can see that you can you uh, can allow SPSS to determine automatically the amount of clusters, or you can specify it yourself if you want it to become free clusters, for example. But in this case, we want it to we want SPSS to think of the amount of clusters to come up with an answer and a maximum of 15, because if it's gonna be more clusters than that, then it's gonna be really, really difficult to interpret. Uh, in the options section, you leave it as it is. Uh, and um, because uh, SPSS will now automatically standardize these three variables. So it will standardize anxiety, standardize depression, and standardize ADD. Um, if you have already used standardized variables. So if these variables are already standardized, you can take them out. Uh, for example, if depression was already standardized, you don't need to standardize it again. Uh, but in this case, none of these variables are standardized. So we want them all to become standardized. Then you press continue. Then you go to the output. And the only thing you select here is create cluster membership variable, which means that at the end, it will create a new variable which shows in which cluster all the respondents are, all the 30 respondents in this case. Okay, so then we press paste. Then we go to our syntax screen. We select the code and we press paste, the big green play button. And then we get the first initial results, which says that the inputs, so the variables were three and the clusters which SPSS has determined is two. And if we then look at the cluster quality, we can see the silhouette measure of cohesion and separation. And this shows to what extent the clusters are different from each other and whether there is a cohesion inside of the clusters. So inside cluster one are the answers together and inside answer to, and inside cluster two are the answer cluster, to, uh, cluster together. So if, uh, so the two clusters should differ from each other. And inside of those clusters, there should be a lot of cohesion. And that is ranked on this by SPSS. And it should be above poor. So it should be fair or good. In this case, I've made my own data set. So of course, it's uh, I've made it in such a way that the cluster quality is good. But in most of the times, it will be somewhere in between, uh, in somewhere in the fair section, which is good enough. And in this case, it's even good. Uh, so that's amazing. If it's lower than 0.0, .0 so if it's really poor, then clustering is sadly not a good idea for your data set. And you shouldn't cluster. Uh, you shouldn't cluster it. Uh, 
Okay, so what we want more results than this. We now know that there are two clusters, but we want to know more, of course. So you double, cl you double click and then you get more results. And first we look on the right and we can see the cluster size. And we can see that cluster one consists of 16 people and cluster two consists of 14 people. And if you then look below, you can see that again, it's 14 people and 16 people. And the ratio of that, so the ratio of the, the, the largest cluster to the smallest cluster is 1.14. Because the clusters are quite similarly in size, so the ratio of the size is close to 1. This ratio should not be higher than 3. So the largest cluster should not be higher than 3 times, it should not be uh, bigger then three times as big as the smallest cluster. That's important. But in this case, it's 1.14. That's far lower than three, so that's perfect. Okay, if we then go to the, instead of the, on the lower left, we, instead of a model summary, we select the clusters. And now you can see a bit more information and you can see the means. You can see that for cluster one, the depression mean is 37.62, while for cluster two, it's 60.64, so that's quite a big difference. So uh, 37.62 for cluster one, which is quite low, and 60.64 for the highest cluster. So there is a big difference. And whether this difference is significant, you can determine with a, uh, with a uh, independent samples t-test, and I'll show that at the end of this video. For ADD, uh, we can see that it's in the uh, cluster one, the uh, average ADD is 33.62 and for a and in the cluster 2 it's 64.86 and anxiety is uh, in cluster 1 41.90 and uh, for anxiety in cluster 2 it's uh, 63 uh, as a whole okay so if we select one of those very if you select one of those values then you can see on the right that you get a frequency table of how it is distributed and you can see that it is not normally distributed. So that's what I once again said. My data isn't really normally distributed. Uh, but for the, for the sake of this video, we'll just ignore it. And we can see that out of the total, the, uh, the, uh, less shaded. So the less shaded is the total. And we can see that the, 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 that cluster one makes up this part of the total frequency and that uh, number, t uh, that cluster number two makes up the rest of the total frequency. And the same applies for ADD. So ADD makes up this part of the total frequency and, uh, cluster two makes up this part of the total frequency. And last but not least, it also applies for anxiety, uh, which makes up of this part of the, uh, frequency this unit and anxiety and cluster two makes up this part of the frequency table of the frequency graph. Okay. Uh, and now, uh, we are going to do a cluster comparison. And if we then select, for example, cluster one, you can see box plots, everybody's favorite statistical tool, box plots. And we can see that the mean of the clusters together. So the overall median is 42.54, but that the me median of cluster one is 38.03. So it's lower than the median, uh, than the overall median. The same applies for ADD because the overall median of the whole data set is 48.12, while the median of, uh, while the medium of ADD for cluster one is only 32.05. And last but not least, it also, uh, for anxiety, the Cluster one median is also lower than the, uh, than the, uh, uh than the, uh, overall median. But you can see that it's a lot closer compared to the other ones. There was quite a big difference for depression and ADD. Well, for anxiety, it's a lot closer to the overall median. And we can look at the same way for cluster number two. And there you can see that the medians are a lot higher than the overall medians. You can see that this median for cluster two is every time a lot higher than the overall median. Okay, so now we know quite a lot about uh, these two clusters. And what we can see is that if we close this and we close this, uh, wait, I won't completely shut it off. 
you can see that SPSS has made uh, a variable which we will call cluster. If you go to variable view and we're going to call it cluster, we can see that now in the data view that every respondent, so respondent 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, until 30, all got categorized in cluster 1 or in cluster 2. Over here you can see cluster 1, 1, 1. Over here you can see cluster 2, 2, 2. So now uh, SPSS has made uh, groups for you, which you can then analyze the differences between. And if you want to know whether the differences in anxiety, the differences in depression, and the differences in ADD are different, significantly different for the clusters, you can, for example, use an uh, you can use a, a independent samples t-test, and then the test variables are anxiety, depression, and ADD, and the grouping variable is cluster. And as you, if you define the groups, then the groups are one and two. And if you then press paste and go to your syntax screen, you can see that there's a new t-test code. So you select it and press the big green play button. And then if you go back to our output screen, output screen, we can see that for anxiety, the difference is significant, the same for depression and the same for ADD. So the two clusters, so the two groups differ significantly in anxiety, depression and ADD. If you now get to more uh, than two groups, uh, more than two clusters, because this in this case it made two clusters, uh, cluster one and cluster two. So you can use a t-test. But if it get, if it uh, generates more clusters, for example three or four, then you can use an ANOVA to uh, determine the, the, the if whether the differences are significant. Okay, so this was the explanation on the first cluster uh, method, which is the two-step cluster method. If this video was helpful, then please leave a like and uh, subscribe to this YouTube channel. And I'll see you guys on the next episode. Ciao.